The Holy Spirit, bless this time we share with each other and with you, gathered around your word. Just as you spoke to those around you prior to your death, speak to us also. And when we are confronted with our sin, bring about repentance and a trust in your forgiveness and love. Amen. All right. Uh, guess what day of Holy Week we're on? Wednesday. Tuesday. You wish it was Wednesday. <laughs> but it's not. It's Tuesday. Pick up Jesus' last day of Holy Week, Tuesday, part six. There are a couple left over here if there are not any more over there. <coughs> Tuesday poll week's really long. Summaries on the left side, page one. This is Jesus' last public address, his last sermon. Uh, it's not his la very last words, which we'll explain in a bit. But it is the last sermon that he preaches, the last public proclamation. And we're going through piece by piece. Page two gives you the text from Matthew chapter 23. I've numbered the paragraphs on the right side, and those are the numbers on pages three and four. If you're a person who likes to take notes, you can. there's a spot for you to jot things in. So we finished very quickly last time um, with number 10. So verses 29 through 32, paragraph 10 on page 2. We'll just repeat it real quickly because we, we were fast last time. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our forefathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. And so you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of the sin of your forefathers. Uh, if you were here last time, at the end, if we briefly went through that, what do you recall? Nothing, which is a good reason we started with it today. Um, they're saying that they never would have murdered the prophets, but they're doing that to Jesus now. So they're okay. We would have never done that. Smacked of pride and starts with an H. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, Hypocrisy again is what? It's uh, say one. No, I put you on the spot. I usually don't do that. Hypocrisy is Steph. It's when you say something, but it's not what you believe in your heart. Yeah, it's not what you believe in your heart. It, it, it's not doing one thing and saying one thing and doing another. That's you, right? That's a sinner. That's not hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is is uh, pretending, it's, it's faking, it's, it's presenting one thing and that's not really what's in the heart. That's a hypocrite. Uh, and so he calls them, he calls them hypocrites. Uh, if, if we had lived in the days of our forefathers, we would have never, we would have never taken part with them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. We, we wouldn't have done that like they did. Yeah, ha, is what Jesus said. <laughs> nice summary, Jerry. <laughs> what else does Jesus say here about that? Because he knew what was in their hearts, right? Never? Yeah, they, he knew they were going to do the same thing to him. And so we noted at the end last week, the last verse, fill up then the measure of the sin of your forefathers. So he's saying, go ahead and do it to me. Go ahead and do it. Your forefathers did it, you might as well. Do what you're going to do. Your forefathers did it. You say you wouldn't have, but even in saying that, you're admitting what? You're admitting what? You're their offspring. You're their offspring. And so go ahead and do what you're going to do. It's a bit of a challenge. It's very forward. It's Jesus knowing what's going to happen to him. Uh, it's always interesting during Lent. You know, you'll, the History Channel will have something on, or the Discovery Channel, or whatever. The, they'll have these shows about Jesus, like, who was Jesus? And Time will have the, you know, he'll be on the, Jesus will be on the cover, and they'll have a cover story. Who was Jesus? And they'll talk about, you know, what he became, and what did he know, and what, what he didn't know, uh, and what led up to his death, and what caused it, and, and they're all wrong. 
they miss things like this. He knew exactly what was coming. It wasn't like it just happened and he was surprised or didn't know. They treat him only as a man and not as God. Press? Just recently there was something about Jesus visiting, how he visited with the Essenes and how he learned something from them that he could practice in his <laughs> ministry. There's a fine line there. There's a fine line there. What is it? Because I want, I want to mock that really bad. <laughs> but then I remember something. Jesus was human. He was human. And do you remember months ago? Okay, let's not kid ourselves. Years ago when we started this study? <laughs> Steph? He went to the temple to learn from the scribes. Yeah. And it even we're even told that he grew in wisdom and stature, right? In other words, uh, way back when, <laughs> we talked about his growth and de development as a human being. Uh, the human nature did need to grow because he started as an infant and he became a man and it, he grew in wisdom. He learned stuff as a human being. He learned stuff as God he's all knowing that's crammed into one person. I don't know how to explain that or what to do with that exactly, but I hear these things. So I want to mock that and say, well, yeah, like he really needed to learn from them. And then we remember when he was young, he's growing in his knowledge as a human being. And we don't always know how that was put together, but I still want to mock that. <laughs> Chances are that was said to show, yeah. see, he really didn't come from right. Jesus. He just stole from everybody else. Yeah. They talk about him formulating his teaching and all, all sorts of garbage that goes right along with that kind of approach you know, that, that you saw. So, uh, he knew, yeah, Bob. Oh, well, it, this is kind of on the, what I thought many times. The, the Jewish leaders, the Shandrin, all those, they knew, the, they knew the prophets, they knew all this, but yet they went ahead and did it. They, they, Isaiah told them all about it, but yet they went and did it. Yeah. What were they thinking? Yeah, what were they thinking? Fill up then the measure of the sin of your forefathers. They knew the prophets. They knew the history of killing the, well, we're going to talk about this more. Jesus does. Uh, killing the prophets. Uh, and, and Jesus is standing there in front of them days before saying, you, your forefathers did this. You're just like them. You descended from them. Go ahead and do it. And then they went ahead and did it. They had opportunity to retreat from their position, right? Which, which had been, uh, their approach for a couple of years had been planning Jesus' death. And they had the chance to back off it, and they didn't. Is this just showing them that they didn't consider Jesus a prophet? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it, you can you hear both, but overall, yeah. And, but they would refer to him as rabbi or teacher or the prophet from, you know, up north in Galilee. So some did, but, you know, the majority didn't. And, and ultimately, they saw him as a threat, which we'll talk more about. So, uh, so that's 10. Let's look at 11. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers some of them you will kill and crucify, others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. You snakes and brood of vipers. I heard Pastor Kosolke working on his next sermon. And he was saying something exactly like this, wanting to preach the law really intently. Would that be okay if he did that? He's over there, you can tell him. <laughs> what would you feel like if, if your pastors, one of your pastors, talked like this? You snakes, you brood of vipers. It's jolting to hear Jesus talk this way. All the talk about, you know, the picture that the world wants to have is peaceful, mild, meek Jesus, loving, you know, caring, lived with all of his friends, they had everything in common, they traveled around, he was gentle. 
<laughs> he was that, right? But he wasn't only that. When the law needed to be preached, he preached it. And that's what this, this whole thing is. But it gets to the very point of it. He's still trying to win their hearts, though, because he says, I will send you these people. And then yes. he says, you're going to kill them. And I'm sure what he's hoping is they'll go, no, we won't. And right. then they'll think about it. And that it wouldn't happen, even though it's going to happen. Yeah, because they already said they wouldn't, right? <coughs> and you say, if we had lived, we wouldn't have done that to the prophets. And he says, I'm going to send you prophets. And yet, it's another chance. There's the law, but in the preaching of the law, there is, uh, as long as the person's there to hear it, there's the chance they will be cut to the heart and be repentant. And not maybe not go through with those things. Brandy? Did they really have a choice um, to change when they died on your heart? Because like Carol, she was like, Did they really have a choice? Or did God make them do that? Because the prophecies say that it had to happen this way, right? So let's take the let's take the uh, the example of Pharaoh, whose uh, heart was hardened, and, and we say, we look at it and say, well, Pharaoh didn't have a choice. Is that fair to the whole story if we say that? No, why is that? Yeah, he was, and he actually did let say, okay, I will. But then he went back again, and, yeah. and after so many times, God said, okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, he does have a choice, and I, I know you know this uh, from the account. But, but if you read the account and remember, he he had the choice. God presented him with the choice, and even though he kind of stepped forward and say, okay, he'd always go back and and reject what God's will was, and. He kept pushing, resisting, resisting, and, and finally God says, fine, have it your way. But even in that instance, we can't blame God. God gave the opportunity. But this is, this is an excellent question. Did they have the choice? And uh, the answer is yes. They did have a choice. They could listen to Jesus speak, or they could not. Some may have. Some certainly did not. We have to remember that God knows all things, too. Even presented with the choice, he knew that some would not. But Jesus had to sacrifice. Yes. It had to happen. Right. And, and you could also say, God knew that it was going to happen. Right? It doesn't mean he made them... Uh, in total, you know, objectivity and, and even unfairness, he made them the objects of his wrath and said, you're going to be the one and you're going to do this and, and then you're going to be deserving of hell because you did it too. That's, that's unfair to God uh, because he knew this was going to happen. It's not the same thing as him making that happen, right? But uh, that's a really good question and it, and it deserves, uh, you know, some thinking about it. It is. But all sins are forgiven. Even this, this kind of yep. seeming destiny of these people he's addressing. Yeah, and, and and keep in mind, Christ knows that he's going <laughs> to pay for even these he's sins. sins. Yeah. That he's condemning. That he's warning them against. We can't even imagine this going on in his mind. God could have made it happen another way. <laughs> yeah, or with different people, or... You know, other people could have done it. It's it's tricky. It's tricky to, it, you know, you're talking about the mind of God too. And at some point, we just step back and say, "This is what I know. <laughs> this is what it says." And we're going to do that uh, as we finish out this part of Tuesday. Um, we're going to talk some more about about that kind of thing. Uh, what else are we doing? Oh. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff in there. Snakes, brood vipers, how you've escaped 
How will you escape being condemned to hell? I'm sending. So what does that tell you? How will you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers. There is an escape. If you will listen, how, you guys are headed for hell. So, therefore, I'm going to send. So he's trying. Again, you see the grace. You see that there's the, the harsh preaching of the law. You snakes, you brood of ripe vipers. But then there's also this, you're on the path to hell. So I'm going to send you people who can save you. That's what he wants. Um, on the other hand, this is what I know what's going to happen. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. So he knows what's going to happen. In his love, he's going to send people to share, to share God's will and God's word with them, even though he knows what they're going to do to them. Yeah, yeah. Saul was the guy, Paul, right? Pursued from town to town. And, and you can read, and I didn't review any of those things, but you guys probably did, those of you who have been in the Wednesday Bible study, um, the, some of the history or the traditions as to how the, um, how the martyrs were killed. They did these things, some of them were horrible. They, they peeled the skin off their bodies. Uh, they sawed them in half, um, all sorts of horrible things. Uh, and Jesus, Jesus knew that this was coming. Uh, they will, some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so, the result. Upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Verse 35. The blood, the blood, the blood. Do you hear it? All the righteous blood that has been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah. The blood, the blood, the blood. This is a continuation of the preaching of the law. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom he murdered between the temple and the altar, right at the temple. Um, you know about Abel, right? <coughs> Cain and Abel. Genesis chapter 4, if you want the reference. Genesis chapter 4. It's where you can read about that, review the details of Cain and Abel. Um, uh, Zechariah, son of Berechiah? Is that familiar at all? I would be shocked if it is. Read it all. Huh? Read it all. Well, this much we know. I'll give you this much. 2 Chronicles 24. <laughs> I say this much we know. But this reference of Jesus raises some questions. It's, uh, it's confusing. Uh, but 24, 2 Chronicles 24, 20 through 22. Three verses. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, son of Jeho Jehoiada, the priest. He stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's commands? You will not prosper because you have forsaken the Lord. He has forsaken you. But they plotted against him, and by order of the king, they stoned him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Joash did not remember the kindness Zechariah's father Jehoiada had shown him, but killed his son, who said as he lay dying, May the Lord see this and call you to account. That's it. That's what we know. So, um, there's some confusion as you look at this. Did Jesus misspeak? Did Jesus get it wrong? Uh, the name of the Father, son of Berechiah, instead of Jehoiada. Is it a reference to a, uh, a grandfather or an ancestor instead of Berechiah? Because that's done. That's the way they use names. There's a whole bunch of questions, and you can do a ton of reading. You're going to end up at the same place. Don't know for sure. But the reference here, um, why he calls him Berechiah, we, some Berechiah, we don't know exactly. Um, but the reference uh, seems to be to the second. Oh, some question if that's the reference either. Uh, should it be the prophet Zechariah? Um, 
but the Second Chronicles one seems to be the reference. Uh, Second Chronicles uh, would be in the Hebrew or the Jewish order of the Old Testament book. Second Chronicles would be the last one, it's the last book. So Kathy's getting it. She's smiling, shaking her head. Is anybody else getting it? What what are you he's, here? He's it. Yeah. First and last. But I also wonder if he's picking people that they would have completely said, "Oh, that was terrible." That, yes. that happened to them. I mean, oh yes. He's definitely able, and I'm guessing probably the second one. Too. Yeah. You, you don't kill them in the well. You don't kill them. You don't kill them in the temple. It's a, it's appalling. It's horrible. It's heinous. And so, yeah, they knew that. Even though to us it's a, you know, it's a three-verse reference in an Old Testament book, to them they knew. Churches have always been sanctuaries. Yeah. That just goes with the territory. Yeah, so this is awful. It's especially awful in the Lord's temple. So, yeah, they, they knew the reference. They knew it well, better than we do for sure. Um, and he's saying, you know, from the... Okay, so this is the scriptures, right? The scriptures you and I know go from what to what? Genesis, Genesis to Revelation. 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 You and I know all the way, right? But for them, the scriptures were Genesis <coughs> to Second Chronicles. That's their order. So Second Chronicles being the last book, he's saying this guy was killed, this righteous one was killed, first book right off the bat, very last book book of scripture, this guy was killed in the most awful way. <coughs> That's the reference. So the whole Old Testament, it's, it's the whole, it's really the whole span of martyrs. From this guy to that guy, from beginning to end, from the first one to the last one recorded. <coughs> the blood, the blood, the blood. Your forefathers killed him. You say you wouldn't. By admitting that, you're admitting that you're just like them. Go ahead and do it. You're on your way to hell. So I'm going to send people to you, but I know you're going to do this. And so the righteous blood of these people, from, from the first one you know to the last one you know recorded, it's going to be upon you. That, yeah, yeah. And so our minds are thinking, you know, what's, what's coming up? Ready? All right. <coughs> blood 
that is being shed on earth. I think they put the, the has been, the past on it because he uses the, the reference from the past, but it really is